November 8th, 2014, my best friend got married on a beach in Rocky Point, Mexico. It was one of the coolest trips that my wife and I took down to Mexico. It was our first trip down to Mexico. And of course, it was just a blast because we had a lot of friends down there, my buddy's family who I grew up with. So like we had the time of our lives spending time with people that we care about and watching my best friend get married to an amazing, an amazing woman. And I got to see half of it. I saw the whole wedding. I was in the wedding. I was one of his groomsmen, um, but I could not see mostly out of my left eye. My left eye was um, more blurry than not. My name is Ryan Hodges. I am a type 1 diabetic, and I have been diabetic for almost 35 years. If you've watched any of my last videos, I've mentioned the fact that I've got that I had diabetic retinopathy in both of my eyes and have had multiple surgeries to fix the problem or to try to fix the problem. My first surgery was right after I got back from this wedding in Mexico. Like and subscribe to my channel so you can get the more updates. My goal is to just bring awareness to the fact that just because you might not be in a good place with your diabetes now, <clears throat> it does not mean that you can't change that and get into a better rhythm with your diabetes. Um, it, it's not an easy thing to do, but it doesn't have to be a super difficult thing either if you have the right tools and motivation to do it, which I do and I am now um, feeling much better about this. So about a week before my buddy's getting married in Mexico, I wake up one morning and my vision is starting to get fuzzy and little black dots and all kinds of crazy stuff in my left eye. And I'm thinking, oh crap, what's going on? Like this can't happen. I, I'm going to be leaving in a week to go to this wedding in, in Rocky Point. I can't not have vision. So I quickly, um, I go down to the doctor, to the eye doctor at the time, the, the last eye appointment that I had to get like my just new glasses or contacts or whatever, I went to, to the Walmart eye doctor because it was easy to get into. It was less expensive than my insurance would charge me for an eye appointment at a different doctor. And the guy's a doctor, right? So like, it doesn't matter where you go. The guy was, he was really good. I get there five minutes later, I'm in the chair and he says, you have diabetic retinopathy. He said, your A1Cs are probably not great, are they? I said, well, no, they're not. And he said, you need to go and you need to see the, the eye doctors at um, Burnett Delaney Perkins Eye Center is where he recommended I go. So I was able to call, make an appointment and get in. I don't know. I can't remember if it was that same day or if it was like the next day, but I was able to get in there that same week and I go in there and I see this doctor. Now, side story the doctor who I saw, who was my, who did the ended up doing the eye surgery, and was helping me with this, also did her eye surgery on my dad. Like, I don't know, fifteen years before this or so. So that was kind of crazy. Back to me, um, I get in there. He says, "Yep, you got diabetic ret retinopathy in your left eye. We need to do surgery. We're gonna go in there. We're gonna drain the blood. We're gonna cauterize the blood vessels that have been caused by elevated blood sugars for an extended period of time." I said, "Cool. What does this mean for my trip to Mexico next week?" He said, "Well, we don't have anything on the schedule until like the end of next week, anyways, or availability until the end of next week, anyways. If we can get you in at that time, great. Go to Mexico, have a great time, enjoy the wedding, and don't do anything different." And I didn't, right? So I go to Mexico. I am my my wife and I are driving down there at the time she was my fiance, and we're, we drive down there. I'm still half blind in my in my my vision. We go down there and we have a great time. I didn't tell him that I was blind in my left eye until well, I mean, many, many, many years after the wedding, because like number one, I didn't want to go down there and have it be about like me not being able to see, right? Like I didn't want anybody to, I just didn't want the attention to be put on me because it was his day. It was his big day. 
and I was super excited for him. So we go down there, we have a blast. My wife and I stayed down there for a few extra days and we just enjoyed our time there. We got back on Wednesday night and Thursday morning, I was scheduled to go have surgery in my left eye. I had the surgery in my left eye and it took, you know, some time to heal and some time to get back to where like the vision came back. Things were looking good. And then it was probably six months later or so, the same thing happened in my right eye. And I was like, oh man, like this can't be happening again. It's it, like now it's in my right eye. I go down, sure enough, diabetic retinopathy in your right eye. Let's get you scheduled for another surgery, get the surgery done. And then it maybe within another six months or so, my vision and my left eye started failing again, went back to the doctor's office and I had to have a second surgery in my left eye, got that taken care of. Now the follow-up appointments were like every, I don't know, two months or it was every month. I can't remember off the top of my head where I would go in there. They would give me a shot in my eye of a medicine that was supposed to help stop the, the hemorrhaging from happening. Because even though the surgery had been done, the surgery just took out the blood from my eye and cauterized the blood vessels that had hemorrhaged. But this, this medicine was supposed to help stop it from happening again. Well, my vision kept going in and out of my left eye, even while having these um, these injections. And the injections were not cheap, even with insurance. And I, I was like, listen, doc, like I'm not um, enjoying the fact that I'm still having these problems with, um, with getting these shots and spending all this money. What, what can I do? Like, can I just stop taking the shots? And he was like, well, I don't recommend it, but it's up to you. So I stopped taking the shots. And I haven't had those shots since I still currently am like in and out of vision in my left eye. I need to get that taken care of. And I figure I will, I'm going to start working on getting that probably taken care of over the next year. Cause I think that right now, if you go back and watch my videos, you will see that my, you know, with, with my blood sugar just becoming better and my A1C is going to be coming better. I figure that now is probably the best time to take care of that because it hopefully it doesn't come back. I have noticed over the past, you know, 10 years that when my vision goes in and out of my left eye, it is probably more than not. And I, I mean, a hundred percent has to do with my blood sugars. If my blood sugars are constantly like better than not, it didn't happen. And then if my blood sugars were going really high, that's when I would start seeing it happen. I would wake up in the morning and my blood sugar would be like 300 and something. And I would just, my, my thought process went to, oh, okay, I'm probably going to lose the vision in my eye. Sure enough, usually within a couple hours, it starts to fade and then it's gone and it, my vision goes and comes back in a day or so. And sometimes it lasts for weeks. Sometimes it lasts for months. It usually goes away and it comes back and it is what it is. And I've just gotten used to it. Another friend of mine who I golf with, um, he would always tell me, hey, do you have vision in your eye so we can go golfing and maybe I can beat you, right? Like I, it's in my left eye. So my golf swing, when I'm, at the, when I'm at the tee box, I tee off and I can't see the golf ball very well. So I rely on people to help me do that. Guys, take care of yourselves. Don't, don't not take care of yourselves. One of the best tools that I have, that I have now come to enjoy is a Dexcom because I can see what my blood sugars are doing all the time. I have been, my blood sugar, I, I just ate lunch a little bit ago, so my blood sugar is starting to move a little bit up, but I'm still right at 101 right now. I think when I started the recording, my blood sugar was in the low 90s. Um, so this is what is awesome about the the Dexcom is that I can watch what my blood sugar is doing. I can see, did I do enough insulin for my lunch? Did I pre bolus with enough time? Like what is, what is my blood sugar doing? And now I have much better control over it. Doing a blood test with a glucose monitor, you get your, you know, your, it takes seconds to get your reading, but then you wait hours to do it again. And with this, it's like doing a blue, a blood glucose test every five minutes. And that's just not something that would be feasible to do with, with a, with a finger stick, right? It just doesn't make sense. 
So today is the day for a sensor change. So I'm actually gonna do that right here to show you how easy it is if you've never done it. So um, I have about another 15 minutes left on my sensor. So I'm just gonna do it now because it, if I do it now, that's 15 minutes sooner. Like it takes two hours to warm up when it's done. And we're gonna, we're gonna have some better luck with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first go into the settings of the Dexcom on the Dexcom app. And I'm going to try to do this upside down. Um, down here at the bottom, it says stop sensor. So I'm going to stop the sensor. And yes, stop sensor. It gives you the instructions of removing the sensor. OK. So the sensor right now is on this arm here. So I'm going to take this off. It's off. It's done. Take the transmitter out of the sensor and get rid of that sensor. I'm gonna take an alcohol prep wipe. We're gonna go to this arm and clean up the arm, clean up the area. All right, then take this out of the, take the sensor out of the container it's got this little thing here that protects the button so you don't accidentally push it off when you don't want to. It's got the adhesive protector here. This little code is the code for the sensor to read on the phone app and the pump. So I take these off and save the one with the code so I know what code to put on. Now the alcohol is, is dry. And so now I'm going to take this and I always sometimes forget to do this. I'm going to snap off the little protector. I'm going to place this on my arm. I go right next to my tattoo. I've heard it works on a tattoo or not, but I go next to it. Press the button. Done. That is now in. They recommend that you rub the adhesive three times in a circle to make sure that it sticks. When I get home later, I have these little like things that go over the top of it to help keep it done. And then again, I'm going to try to do this without a mirror. You place the transmitter in, you push it in, and it's ready to go. Now I am going to on here, hit the new sensor button, enter the code. I'm going to enter it manually, enter code 911. Seven. It's ironic that 911 is a code for a diabetic. Okay, so hit done. Confirm that the code is 9117. Success. Next, start sensor. And now it starts the warm up time of two hours. Now, I have to also do all that on the pump screen, so I'm going to take care of that real fast here. You won't be able to see this, but it's basically the same, um, same steps. So I'm doing that over here and that's all that it is. And now two hours from now, it's going to give me a reading. So I am shooting in the dark for the next two hours. Um, in my, in my desk here, I do have my trusty glucose monitor. So I will probably check my blood sugar a couple times. Doing it right now allows me to have the, the CGM set up so that when I get home for dinner, I'm getting readings, I do my insulin, and I can pay attention to what's going on for dinner time. So it's it's a game changer. I had tried a Dexcom years and years ago. I didn't like it then. When I was on a mini med pump that also had a CGM, I gave that a shot. And I didn't like that one because it, I had to calibrate it two times a day. I was still doing my blood tests. Like I was doing my blood tests more times a day than I had ever done, which was probably good. But to also have the blood glucose, the CGM, the continuous glucose monitor, I was like, why am I doing all of this? It just didn't make sense. And now with the Dexcom, it works so much better. I don't have to do my blood sugar. It is constantly, um, it's just right. When I do my blood test, like when I, when I check it against the meter, cause I do, I probably check it against the meter once every sensor, um, at least, and it's within five points of what the, what the meter says usually. Um, the CGM is about 15 minutes behind, but if my blood sugar is running at a very like even 
course or track or graph slope, whatever you want to call it, um, it should be relatively close to what it is. So it's an amazing technology. I'm on the Dexcom G6. This is not sponsored by Dexcom, but Dexcom, if you want to sponsor me, I'm open. So give me a call. Let's figure this out because I love the product. I absolutely love the fact that I'm, I have this much just visibility to my diabetes and the things that are going on in my life. I will talk to you guys on the next video. I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to continuing to grow with you. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks. Bye.